Hello again, sport fans. This is Bob Robertson, along with Elmer Anderson, speaking to you from the Civic Ice Arena, all set to bring you the second half of America's fastest-growing sport, the roller derby, with the Ravens against the Braves here tonight. The Braves are wearing the dark uniforms, actually dark blue, and the Ravens are in the lighter uniforms, a very light gray with red and black trim. This is the first period of the second half just underway. The girls skating period in the second half with the Ravens leading the Braves by a score of eight to seven. It's a one point lead for the Ravens over the Braves as the jam now gets set to form. The jammers and the striped helmets, the only skaters who are allowed to score or call off the jam are at the back of the pack and working their way through. As soon as one of those striped helmets, a jammer gets to the front and there goes Joanne Coons, number 52 of the Ravens. Now the time of the jam starts. She has 90 seconds in which to circle the entire track, pass members of the opposing team, and score. Out after her on the jam comes number seven, Bobby Mateer of the Braves. And after her, a defensive player wearing the solid Colmer helmet, Loretta Behrens. After Bobby Mateer, as Mateer takes the lead on the jam. And now out in front goes Behrens. She cannot score, cannot call it off. She can only help her teammate, Joanne Coons, and that she does. Once again, Joanne Coons of the Ravens, number 52, is out in front. Barons blocks back on Bobby Mateer now to slow her up. They bang away at each other along the corner of the track there. Bank 45 degrees out of those turns. Tremendous speed. Speeds up to 40 miles an hour here at the roller derby. And now up to the back of the pack comes Joanne Coons. Back to block is Mary Pocahontas Upel. Upel blocks on Joanne Coons. Tries to keep her from going by to score. Coons to the outside. Upel still back to block now. Time running out on this jam, and there's time with no points scored on the jam. As Mary Pocahontas Upel did a fine blocking job for the Braves on Joanne Coons of the Ravens. And Joanne failed to get by to score. The score remains at this point in the game the Ravens eight and the Braves seven. Roller Derby, America's fastest growing sport, and what tremendous thrilling action it's providing for the fans here tonight. They love it. The excitement, the hard blocking, and the tremendous speed of the roller derby on this bank track. Now, once again, the jammers move to the back of the pack. When all four are in position back there, they'll pick up Bobby Mateer here on the straightaway. That's Bobby, number seven, one of the fastest female skaters in the world today. Now, all the jammers are at the back of the pack. The whistle sounds, the first whistle. No time starts here. Time does not start until one of the jammers on either team gets clearly to the front of the pack, and Bobby Mateer goes on the inside and is out in front. After her goes Jeannie Porter. Porter, a full-blooded Indian girl. After Bobby Mateer, one jammer out from each team. The blocking is back in the pack as these two race now for the lead, and Porter takes the lead away from Bobby Mateer. Jean Porter out and skating now for the Ravens. Bobby Mateer right on her heels, now goes to the inside and blocks out on Porter and again goes to the front. As these two start to move up now on the back of the pack. The blocking in the pack is rugged as both teams try to hold back their opponents waiting for their potential scorer, the jammer, to get up there and try to go by. Both girls come up. Bobby Mateer goes on by for a four-pointer. Bobby Mateer sweeping to the outside, picked up four points on the play. The only member of the Raven team she did not pass, of course, was the Raven jammer out there. So Bobby Mateer picks up a big one, four points. Previously in this match, Hal Janowitz, the Raven coach, had scored a four-pointer during one of the men's skating periods. And once again now, they will form on the track. The score has not gone up on the board as yet, but that should make it 11 to 8 in favor of the Braves over the Ravens now. A three-point lead. The striped helmets being worn now by Dolores Doss, number 51, and Jean Porter, number 53, for the Ravens. Bertha Ruiz, number five, and Mary Upel, number eight, for the Braves. As once again, the jam forms down below on the track. And away we go. The jammers battle to get through. Dolores Doss tries to come out for the Ravens, but she's blocked off on the play by Bobby Mateer. Now here's a whip by Sharon Stevens to put Dolores Doss through, and the jam is underway. We're in the first skating period of the second half. It's 11 to 8 in favor of the Braves over the Ravens. And it's Dolores Doss way out in front now, jamming. And Mary Pocahontas Upel is out after her. Loretta Barron puts a block on Mary Upel. Upel lost her helmet. Now she cannot score. Bobby Matera blocker is also out there for the Braves. Only one jammer able to score now has the helmet on. 
And that's Dolores Goss, number 51, 54, and 55, doing the blocking there for the Ravens. Sharon Stevens, now the lead blocker, as the Braves drop back to block on the lone jammer, Dolores Goss. Here's Dolores, standing gracefully as she moves up on the back of the pack now into scoring position. She is the lone potential scorer at this time. Dolores closing fast. Number three, Joyce Beasley is at the back of the pack along with Mary Upel and Bobby Mateer to block on her. Dolores tries to go by Beasley. is blocked, can't get by with 30 seconds left on the jam. Beasley blocking on Dolores Doss. The Ravens trying to score here as they trail 11 to eight. Doss again moves up on the back of the pack. Time growing short on the jam. Beasley blocking on Dolores Doss. Upel is also back there to block. Roller derby action, fast, furious, rough and tough. Doss goes to the outside to try and go through. Now back to the inside of the track, but Joyce Beasley blocks well. Three seconds, two seconds, one second, and time is out. Time runs out on the jam, with a jam ending with no point. And here's a timeout called down on the track below. Timeout with a score. The Braves 11 and the Ravens 8. Now for a word about some of these fine skaters, here's a great skater himself, Elmer Anderson. Well, thank you, Bob. Talking about roller derby, basically, ladies and gentlemen, roller derby is a composite of all roller derby major league sports. It's a sports cocktail, to coin a phrase. It's the got the five-man team from basketball, the teamwork of baseball, the roughness of hockey and football. It's on a specially constructed bank track, 124 feet long, 70 feet wide, bank 45 degrees at either turn. That primarily is used for, as skaters attain speeds up to 40 miles an hour. The girls do attain speeds of 32, the men 41. This is officially clocked by the University of Chicago, 1954, in Chicago. And now back to the action with your play-by-play -play announcer, Bob Robertson. Back to action we go here in the first skating period of the second half. The girls on the track now, the Braves leading the Ravens 11 to eight. No jammer out in front as yet. Watch the striped helmets. They are the ones who must go out on the jam. They are the jammers who are allowed to score or if they wish to call off the jam. Bertha Ruiz goes down hard. And now we get a jammer out in front. It's number 55 of the Ravens, Sharon Stevens. Tall blonde gal is out in front. Sharon can move on that track and she's way out in front. Down goes Upel. Pocahontas unhappy about that as she was dumped with a good block. And down goes Bobby Mateer now as the Ravens are blocking hard all over the track. Up on the back of the pack now comes Sharon Stevens and down goes Bertha Ruiz. Now here comes Sharon Stevens moving up on the three Braves who are dumped one after another on that track by fine Raven blocking. Four blockers back now for the Braves as Stevens moves up. Beasley puts on a block. Sharon Stevens, number 55, trying to get by number three, Joyce Beasley of the Braves. Here comes Sharon, tries to go to the outside. Being held up back there with a good elbow block. Sharon now drops back, looks for an opening to go through, tries once again, again Beasley blocks back on her. Still no score on this jam, as Sharon Stevens, the lone potential scorer for the Ravens, tries to fight her way through. Tremendous action here at the Roller Derby. The Braves lead the Ravens 11 to eight. Watch the action at the back of the pack, as Sharon Stevens tries to get by Joyce Beasley and Bobby Mateer to score. Little Iodine Barrett's back, and down on the play goes Sharon Stevens, and when the lead jammer falls, the jam is automatically off. No point scored on the jam. It remains 11 to eight in favor of the Braves over the Ravens. As Sharon Stevens, the lead jammer, went down on the track that time, a good block. She's wearing that striped helmet. It's a gray helmet with red stripes over the top. That's Sharon number 55. Incidentally, when you attend the roller derby matches, you'll see some of the skaters rest along the rail. Only those who were jammers on the immediately uh, preceding jam are allowed to rest between jams. All right, here we go again as the jammers try to fight their way through to the front. Pocahontas Upel and Bertha Ruiz for the Braves and for the Ravens. It's Gene Porter breaking out through Sharon Stevens, the other striped helmet jammer. Here's Porter getting a whip from Iodine Barons. And out in front she goes. Has little Iodine with her as a blocker. This is Gene Porter, a real veteran of the bank track skating. Iodine Barons blocking back on Bobby Mateer. They've been building each other hard all night. Had words a couple of times as well. 
Porter now is half a lap ahead and moving up fast. She must come all the way around and scores a point for every member of the opposing team she is able to lap. Porter moving in fast on the back of that pack, and the blocking is rough and tough in the pack right now. Here comes Gene Porter around the turn and moving up now on the pack. And here's a pull away by the Braves. All five Brave skaters out in front, racing away, trying to stay in front. Barons and Doss cut off Bobby McKeer, and they score a point on her. Porter will get a whip by Beasley. That's two points. And Porter is still going. Another good block by the Iodine Barons and Dolores Doss. Great blocking by the Ravens. Three points on the play. Down goes Bertha Ruiz. Four points. Only Mary Upal has not been scored on. And there it is, a grand slam. Five points for Gene Porter. up on the track as Pocahontas Upal is now waved to the penalty box. Two minutes for that block after the jam had ended. And on the jam, little Gene Porter, despite a pull away by the Braves, raced out to score five points. Tremendous blocking by the Ravens as they dumped Brave skaters all over the track. And one by one, Gene Porter sailed by them to score a big grand slam, five points. And to put the Ravens out in front again, 13 to 11. And Mary Upal is in the penalty box. Oh, is she unhappy out there? Well, the girls skating period has now come to an end. And now we will watch the changeover as the men take over the track. And to tell you a little bit about this changeover, Elmer, fellow who's been through it a lot of times, come on in here. All right, Bob, the changeover, one of the most beautiful yet dangerous maneuvers in roller derby. It's a traditional uh, event uh, taking place as the uh, preceding skaters, such as the girls, are now turning the track over officially to the men in a very, very dangerous maneuver, yet beautiful to watch, as every skate in perfect synchronization, along with all 20 skaters. It's like a ballet line here, as night now in the hearts of every skater, they're hoping that everything will be okay, as a contact will be made here in just a second or two, and we hope everything goes along okay. Changeover looks okay, 20 skaters on the track taking over, now 10. Five skaters from each team are on the track for the second skating period of this, one of the most exciting games it's been our pleasure to uh, telecast. Here's Bob Robertson. All right, the jam is underway, Elmer and the Ravens have Dave Battersby number 54 out as the lead jammer now. You'll notice the Braves are skating one man short as Mary Upel pick up the penalty just at the end of the girls skating period. And when that happens, when the penalty overlaps, one of the men's skaters must sit out the penalty picked up by Mary Upel. Number 54, Dave Battersby out in front. 51 there, the lead blocker. Doing the blocking up front is Coach Hal Janowitz of the Ravens. And he is blocking hard there on number five, Ray Novak, who is the lead jammer at the present time for the Braves. The Braves actually have no jammer out in scoring position as Janowitz blocks back on Novak, back on Battersby. Leads by a long way now, half a track length out in front on the jam for the Ravens. The Ravens lead in the match, 13 to 11 here. We're in the second skating period of the second half. This is the third skating period of the game for the men. The men and the women alternate skating periods, and each will make four skating period appearances on the track for a full game. Now, Red Smart, number three, one of the greatest blockers in roller derby, is back to do the blocking as Dave Battersby moves up, tries to move by Smart. Smart picked him with a real good elbow block. Now Battersby with Don Richmond, number 52, to help out back there at the back of the pack. Tries to move up again. Watch Richmond try to move Smart out of there to let Battersby slip through for the score. Here comes a whip. Battersby goes down on a fine hip block that time by Red Smart. The big redhead threw the hip into him, and Battersby went down hard. There was no score. So as the jam ends, it's still 13 to 11 in favor of the Ravens over the Braves. The penalty time has now elapsed. A two-minute penalty picked up by Mary Upel in the previous skating period. And so the Braves now are at full strength. Georgie Copeland, number four, a tremendously fast skater, and Mark Ludonio for the Braves at the back of the pack. They wear the striped helmets. Dave Battersby and Big Butch Nur, number 55, will be the jammers here for the Ravens. And Butch Nur and Georgie Copeland start out on the jam. Nur is the leading jammer, number four, George Copeland of the Braves, right behind him on his heels. And then Dave Battersby, number 54. Georgie Copeland now 
is outnumbered on the jam. If he can get the lead, he just might cut it off. That is the prerogative of the lead jammer only. At any time the strategy calls for it, the lead jammer may put his hands on his hips and call off the jam if he feels that it's to his advantage to do so. Watch Copeland now, number four of the Braves, outnumbered by two Raven skaters, takes the lead. Now will Copeland gamble or will he cut it off? Georgie says he's going to go, one of the fastest skaters in all roller derby. Number four, Georgie Copeland, a UCLA student, and he goes by for three. Beautiful blocking by the Braves as Georgie Copeland shot by for three points on the play. Fine play by blockers like Red Smart in that pack as they set it up for fast skating George Copeland. And George literally flew by the three Ravens in that pack and scored the three points to put the Braves out in front. The score is 14 to 13, the Braves over the Ravens. Copeland now will don a blocker's helmet and be replaced by Red Smart. First time tonight that Red has been out as a jammer. And he's a good one as well as a good blocker. Gene Kuklovsky and Red Smart will now be the jammers for the Braves. Kuklovsky trying to wiggle and weave his way through. It's Battersby and Hal Janowicz, number 51, on the jam now. And Janowicz for the Ravens goes out to the front. Raven coach Hal Janowicz, a great skater and a great blocker. A big man who can move. And Red Smart, number three, goes out after him now for the Braves. Two of the greatest players in roller derby. And look at him go. Here comes Janowitz and Red Smart right after him. Two tremendous skaters. And what a duel this will be if Smart catches up to Janowitz. What a duel it is right now. Smart moving up on Janowitz on the jam. The rest of the boys blocking back in the pack. Smart catches Janowitz. Just grazed him with an elbow and takes the lead. Now Janowitz is after Smart. Copeland blocking on Richmond at the back of the pack. As they belt away at each other, Smart comes up on the inside, gets a point and cuts it off. Red Smart got by Don Richmond and then immediately put his hands on his hips and cut it off. That's the first point of the night for Red Smart. And it makes the score 15 to 13 in favor of the Braves. As Red Smart, a tremendous blocker, turned jammer that time and picked up the point. And there's Red who decides to keep the jammer's helmet. He will remain on the jam. Number 56, Frank Macedo, will join Hal Janowitz as a jammer now for the Ravens. Kuklovsky and Smart will remain as the jammers for the Braves. 15 to 13 the score. Right now it's the Braves leading the Ravens by a slim two. In a seesaw struggle, it's been that way ever since it got underway. The jammers are in position at the back of the pack, and the whistle sounds, and away we go. More exciting action at the roller derby. Macedo tries to go through on the outside. Can't get by Georgie Copeland, number four. Copeland, one of the fastest skaters in the derby. Now Janowitz tries the outside. Gene Kuklovsky of the Braves tries to go inside, and Janowitz goes out to lead the jam. Now we'll start timing the 90 seconds of the jam. Here's Copeland blocking on Janowitz. Copeland is not a jammer. He cannot score. He cannot cut it off. All he can do is hold up Janowitz, and he does as Red Smart slips through. Now it's Red Smart for the Braves, the leading jammer. A whip now by Richmond sends Janowitz winging after Red Smart. Here's Red Smart. That's Janowitz right behind him. Just a reverse of what it was last time around. Two great skaters and tremendous blockers battling it out here on the bank track. They're racing up on the heels of the pack. Red Smart. Pursued by Raven coach Hal Janowitz. Art Masro, the coach of the Braves, not in uniform tonight, not skating. Now the boys are right together. Watch the action now as two great ones get together. Janowitz blocks by on Smart and goes on past him. Smart comes up on the inside, blocks back on Janowitz and takes the lead. Tremendous competition. A block by Janowitz. He comes up on Copeland. He goes by and cuts it off with a point. As Copeland was blocking on Richmond, he thought Smart had the lead, but instead it was Hal Janowitz who came up with the lead and scored his seventh point of the game. One point for the Ravens, and here's a timeout call down below on the track with a score. The Braves 15, and the Ravens now 14.
Now set to go once again in the third men's skating period of the game, the second skating period of the second half. We have four minutes and 55 seconds left now in this skating period. With two periods to follow, the score is 15 to 14 in favor of the Braves over the Ravens. And here we go. As once again, the pack is formed. Julian Silva trying to get out for the Ravens. Can't go by on the outside. Still battling there. Number 53 gives a whip now to Frank Macedo. And Macedo takes the lead. The jam is on. Now they'll start timing the 90 seconds. Gene Kuklovsky trying to get out of the uh, pack as a jammer for the Braves. Can't get out of there as he's blocked on. Copeland also blocks back. There's some fine blocking back there in that pack right now. As out in front is Frank Macedo of the Ravens. And so far the Braves have not been able to get a jammer out of there. Only one jammer out on the jam at the present time, Macedo of the Ravens. Watch the blocking there for a moment as Macedo races around the track. Tremendous blocking, and now Kuklovsky of the Braves breaks out, and Big Butch Nur, number 55, a blocker, a defensive player, is after him to try and slow him down. Nur cannot score or cut it off. He's out there only to slow up Kuklovsky. Watch him now as he moves up with the block. Sends Kuklovsky high to the rail, but Gene recovers beautifully. Comes down on Nur again, and Nur again steers him out. And now at the back of the pack, here comes Frank Macedo of the Ravens in scoring position. And Big Red Smart is back there to block on him. Macedo is caught up to the pack now. Patters be there to help him. And Red Smart of the Braves back to make the stop on this one. Here's a whip and a tremendous block by Smart and down goes Macedo rolling on the track. A vicious elbow block by Big Red Smart sent Macedo head over heels off the track and stopped the jam. The lead jammer went down, and any time that happens, the jam is automatically off. No score there. Right now, in several groups on the infield of the track, the girls' teams will be out for the next skating period very shortly, are talking over the strategy. And resting there on the rail, number 56, the Ravens' Frank Macedo, wearing the striped helmet of the jammer. Once again, they're forming only the jammer on the preceding jam he is allowed to rest while the pack is reforming for another jam. There's the whistle signifying that the jammers are in position, and a whip sends Macedo out again. Got by Georgie Copeland and takes the lead. Almost went down, but he holds his balance. Now it's Copeland out after Frank Macedo. Georgie Copeland, tremendous skater. He's only a blocker on this one. He cannot score, but he might try to knock down or slow down Frank Macedo. Blocking back in the pack now is to slow it down as the Ravens try to slow down the Braves and allow Macedo to catch up. The block there by Copeland. He goes out in front. Now he cannot cut off the jam. He is not wearing the striped helmet. He's only a blocker. And out now to help comes Dave Battersby, also a blocker for the Ravens. Battersby coming out looking for Copeland as Macedo went up on the rail but recovered. Now here's Battersby after Copeland. Runs him off into the infield trying to let his man Macedo get by. And Macedo finally does, but he is caught, and down he goes, but he was not the lead jammer. He had already been passed on the play. Out to take the lead on the jam now goes Julian Silva. He's followed closely by Gene Kuklovsky, and Silva puts his hands on his hips, and as the leading jammer, calls it off. You may have noticed on that last play that Frank Macedo had been the leading jammer. He went down, but just as he went down, two other striped helmet jammers passed him on the track, and when he went down, he was no longer the leading jammer. Consequently, his fall did not cut off the jam. One minute, 20 seconds left now in the skating period for the men. Time, perhaps, for somebody to score here. It's 15 to 14, the Braves in front by one point over the Ravens. All right, we're set. The jammers are in position. One minute, two seconds left now in the period. Macedo again goes to the front on a whip. Here's Macedo out in front. Little Frank, number 56. Not very big, but man, can he fly. After him on the play comes Big Red Smart, a blocker only. Watch out for Red Smart. He's not out there to say, how are you, to Frank Macedo. Smart catching up with those long-legged strides on little Frank Macedo. Now watch Smart as he comes up on the inside. There's the elbow block. Oh, he shook Macedo that time. That one hurt. Smart has the lead now. Fakes a block. Macedo tried to go inside. Smart held it. Now gives him another one, and down goes Macedo from that elbow block by Red Smart. And as the lead jammer goes down, the jam is called off. Now we have word. 
Edwards down here, Red Smart, and Frank Macedo, and Janowitz jumps in to help out, and Janowitz is after Smart now. Number 51, Hal Janowitz, the coach of the Ravens, came in to help out as Frank Macedo, and Red Smart had a few words along the rail. Physically and size, at least, Macedo would be no match for Smart. Janowitz figured to even that up by jumping in to help his man, and we almost had fisticuffs. Well, a men's skating period is now at an end. And we will now have the changeover as the women take the track. And as the changeover takes place, here again is Elmer Anderson. Give a rehash, a brief rehash, if we may, about some of the penalties that occur here in the game of roller derby. There are two types of penalties, the two-minute and five-minute penalty. The two-minute, rated as the minor type of penalty, is given for illegal use of the hands, illegal blocking after the jam is over, grabbing by the shorts, kicking, and then fighting for the five-minute penalty, or insubordination to the official is ruled as a major penalty. Right now, the changeover has taken place. Everything's okay. Back to Bob Robertson. All right, the girls are back on the track. This is the final skating period for the girls in this game as the Braves lead the Ravens 15 to 14. The men and the women each have one skating period remaining. This is the last one just starting for the girls. No jammers out yet. Watch them as they battle for position, trying to get a jammer out in front. The striped helmet signifies the jammer, the player who can score. Two players on each team wear those striped helmets on each jam. Now watch as Bertha Ruiz tried to slip through on the inside for the Braves, couldn't quite make it. Now here's little iodine Barons moving out, but not in front as Bobby Matera blocker goes out with her. The jam doesn't start until she gets the lead. Bobby Mateer wearing the solid color helmet, the white helmet, is not a jammer. She cannot score. Bertha Ruiz also coming up now. And now Ruiz gets a whip. She goes out in front, and now the jam is underway. Number five, little Bertha Ruiz is the lead jammer here for the Braves. She's out in front. Bobby Mateer out in front to block for her. Joanne Coons comes out of there, slips by Mateer. And Joanne Coons now, number 52 for the Ravens, sets sail. Trying to catch up to that lead jammer. Bobby Mateer blocking on her. They battle for the number one blocking spot out there right now. Coons and Mateer. Bertha Ruiz, meantime, is sneaking up on the rear of that pack. As Gene Porter and Jan Ballow are back there to block. Down across the way on the play goes Dolores Doss of the Ravens. Number 51 blocked out. And now here's Bertha Ruiz sneaking up on the rear of the pack in scoring position. Blocked back by Gene Porter. Number five in the striped helmet for the Braves is the only potential scorer here. That's Bertha Ruiz. Gene Porter, number 53, blocking on her. Mary Upel back to help out her teammate here to try and score. Now Dolores Doss blocks on Ruiz. Doss again, and down goes Bertha Ruiz with a hard block. And that calls off the jam. Well, the jam is off. As Bertha Ruiz went down hard just at the uh, bank of the turn, just where the incline starts to get real steep up to that full 45 degree incline on the top of the turn. She went down hard and the jam was cut off. So now they'll have to reform it. There was no score on the jam. It's still 15 to 14 in favor of the Braves over the Ravens here. The seventh skating period of the night, the final skating period for the girls. The jammers will move in at the rear of the pack now. Number 53 there wearing the striped helmet is Gene Porter. The jammers this time will be Bertha Ruiz and Joyce Beasley. For the uh, Braves, Gene Porter and Loretta Behrens for the Ravens. Loretta goes by the colorful name of Little Iodine. And the uh, temperament she shows out here will tell you exactly why. All right, the jammers are all in position. There's the whistle as all four jammers were at the rear of the pack. They must all start from that spot, work their way through the pack. Now up they come, and here's a penalty called on the play. Bobby Mateer has been waved into the infield by the officials. So Bobby Mateer has been penalized, and the Braves now will skate one player short. Gene Porter goes to the outside, but Joyce Beasley and Bertha Ruiz take the lead. Now Gene Porter goes out for the Ravens. She is outnumbered, although her team has the odd skater. Now Barons gets a whip and goes by. So now all four jammers are out. With the Braves holding the edge at the moment, two to one away out in front, but Barons coming up to help. Down goes Porter, and now it's Barons of the Ravens. 
skating against two of the Braves. Beasley and Ruiz. Here's Burns. Coming up now on Bertha Ruiz. Loretta Little Iodine Burns, number 54. Takes the inside, blocks Ruiz, blocks on Beasley and goes by as Beasley went high to the rail. It's Loretta Barron's now, the lead jammer for the Ravens. She's got good blocking. She goes by two. She got two. Two points scored there by Loretta Little Iodine Barron. And she got some very, very fine blocking indeed. Barron picked up two points on the play. And that will put the Ravens back in front of the Braves again by a score of 16 to 15. 16 to 15 now in favor of the Ravens over the Braves. As Loretta Barron's sneak by with good blocking for a couple of points there against the Braves who were skating one member short. And she did a fine blocking job on the jam to get the lead away from two members of the Braves. Bobby Mateer's penalty time has almost expired. She's on her way back to the track to join the group. So into the pack again goes number seven, Bobby Mateer, one of the fastest skaters in roller derby. The jammers now at the rear of the pack, and here we go. It'll be number 51, Dolores Doss, and number 52, Joanne Coons, jamming here in the striped helmets for the Ravens. Number three, Joyce Beasley, and number five, Bertha Ruiz, on the jam for the Braves. The whistle sounds, everybody's in position, and more roller derby action is underway on this jam. 16 to 15, the Ravens in the light uniforms lead the Braves in the dark suits. The girls' final skating period of the night. The men have one more skating period to go. No jammer in front. Beasley gets a whip but can't get by Porter. Joanne Coons now tries to go out. Pocahontas Upel blocking on her and Dolores Doss, number 51 of the Ravens, moves out in front. Here's Dolores Doss. Sweeping around the track with long strides. Bertha Ruiz takes out after her now. So each team has one jammer out. As Porter blocks back on Mateer, they are the two lead blockers at the present time. We have two jammers out, one from each team. And that would appear to be all the jammers that are going out. The rest of them will block in the pack now. Dolores Doss and Bertha Ruiz. There's Doss leading the way. Ruiz closing fast, however, along that straightaway as they sweep around the turn again. These two skaters moving up fast on the pack. They wear the striped helmets that mean they can score. The blocking in the pack now roughens a little. Doss moves up on Upel, tries to get by on the rail. Gets some help in there from Barons. Can't get by on the first try as a great defensive player. Mary Upel blocks back on Dolores Doss. Bertha Ruiz also moving up. Each team now has a potential scorer up there as Doss blocks back on Ruiz and then moves up on Upel again. Upel blocks out Doss and now to the uh, number one jam spot goes Bertha Ruiz of the Braves. Upel will try to push her by as she blocks on Doss. Ruiz moving up on Loretta Barron. Little Iodine turns to block on Bertha Ruiz. We've got a potential scorer and a blocker on each side. And it would look very much like we have a point for the Braves as Upel blocked out Barron's and allowed Bertha Ruiz to slip by. It is a point for the Braves on the play. And that will tie the score. And a timeout is called down below on the track with a score. The Braves 16 and the Ravens 16. Bob Robertson along with Elmer Elbows Anderson here at the Roller Derby. The Braves and the Ravens all tied up 16 to 16. This is the final skating period for the girls. Four minutes and 42 seconds now remain to them. And then the men will take the track for the final period. No jammers out in front yet. When one of those striped helmets gets out in front, they start timing the 90-second jam. Barbara O'Leary, number six, tries to get out but can't go. Now Bobby Mateer, and she is chased out along the uh, track there by little Iodine Barons and got by. So the jam is on as Bobby Mateer flies along the bank track. Little Iodine, Loretta Barron, hot in pursuit now. These two have been feuding, fussing, and fighting ever since the roller derby got underway, and down goes Barron's. And she's not a bit happy about that as Bobby Mateer dumped her on the track. And Mateer is out alone on the jam now, and the Braves are blocking back hard in that pack, trying to hold the entire Raven team back. The Ravens haven't been able to get anybody out of there yet. Gene Porter still trying to get through. Good blocking by the Braves. And now Barron's breaks out in front again. 
blocked back on Barbara O'Leary. And coming up on the rear of the pack now is fast skating Bobby Mateer, and here's a pull away by the Ravens. All five skaters break out in front. They'll try to outrace Bobby Mateer now. The Braves tried this earlier, but it didn't work. Doss is blocked. Here comes Mateer up, gets by Doss for one point as Mary Upel is up to block now for the Braves. Bobby Mateer trying to overtake the Raven skaters. Goes by Gene Porter for a second point. There are still three Ravens out in front. Blocked back is Coons, and there's a third point scored by Mateer. As Joyce Beasley and Mary Pocahontas Upel do some great blocking on the play. There's a fourth point as Bobby Mateer goes by another skater. Only Barons remains. Little Iodine is the only one not scored on, and down goes the lead jammer. As Loretta Barons dumped the lead blocker, and skaters piled up on the track with the jammer, Bobby Mateer going down after scoring four points on the play. Four points for Bobby Mateer. And for Bobby now, that is eight points in the second half and a total of 10 in the game. She is the leading scorer for the girls. In fact, the leading scorer, all I've told in the game, Hal Janowitz leads the men with seven points tonight. Now we have two minutes and 25 seconds remaining for the girls on the track here in this final skating period for them. 20 to 16, the Braves lead the Ravens at the present time. Wearing jamming helmets are Mary Pocahontas Upel and Bobby Mateer for the Braves. Gene Porter and Joanne Coons wearing jamming helmets for the Ravens. As soon as the jammers are at the rear of the pack, there it is, the whistle sounds and away we go once again. The team scored on last gets the front blocking position as they get started. And Gail Fund, number four, is blocking up in front for the Braves. Number 55 now, Sharon Stevens of the Ravens moves out into the front blocking spot. Took it away from Gail. No jammers out of there yet. Back there all of those last four spots so far. Now Mary Upel starts to move up. Fights her way through. Got by Sharon Stevens and takes the lead. We have a jammer out. And little iodine Barons goes out after Mary Upel. These two have almost tangled a couple of times. Barons now just slowing Upel down. Hoping that one of the Raven jammers will get out there. And a beautiful block by Mary Upel and down goes little iodine Barons. So Mary Upel still holds the lead. Gene Porter now gets out as a jammer for the Ravens. Bobby Mateer comes out for the Braves. Now we have three jammers out there. Two for the Braves, one for the Ravens. And they sweep around the track. A little less than a minute to go in the jam now. And we have one minute to go in the skating period. Blocking is hard back in that pack. Loretta Barron drops back to block, and down goes Gene Porter there on the track. Blocked hard out of there by uh, Mary Upel and Bobby Mateer. So now there are two brave jammers moving up on the rear of the pack. Iodine Barron drops back to block on them. She has two to contend with. Now watch and see what she'll do. She blocks on Upel. Mateer moves up. A block by Barron on Mateer. Now on Upel again. Again on Mateer. Beautiful blocking job. Here comes Jean Porter. She goes through. She cuts it off. Great play. Jean Porter, who had been knocked down and apparently out of the play, taking advantage of the fine blocking in there by Loretta Barons. Look out. Here's trouble as Loretta Barons throws a block into Mary Upel, and now Upel goes after Barons. Here we go. The official finally grabs Mary Upel. As they threw elbows into each other along the uh, straightaway, and Barons finally dumped Upel on the infield, and Upel took after Loretta Barons. We'll probably have some penalties handed out here. There's still some pushing back there among the girls on the track who are still moving. And I would think that these two girls have been banished from the game. Here's a hard elbow block by Upel on Barons, and Barons throws a bulldog headlock on her, and down they go. The battle is on. It's Loretta Barons and Mary Upel down there in the infield. They pull both of the girls away now. And I'd have to call that about a draw so far. I think Elmer would agree. As they pull the two girls away, but fiery tempers exploded there. As little Iodine Barons and Mary Pocahontas Upel finally tangled. They've been belting each other hard all night. And they finally went for each other here just at the end of this skating period for the girls. And it appeared they were both being sent from the track at the time. 
as they had headed towards the exit gate. And as they got there together, they tangled down into the infield and had to be pulled apart by the coaches, officials, and players. Well, now we'll have the changeover as the girls turn the track over to the men. It would appear that two penalties were handed out to the Braves and one to the Ravens. So both teams will be shorthanded here. The Braves will start the final men's period skating with three men and the Ravens with four. Here's the changeover as the girls turn the track over to the men. It's 20 to 16 as the Braves lead the Ravens. The final skating period of the night. Here we go. Both teams shorthanded. Butch Nurn, number 55 of the Ravens, takes the lead. The jam is on. Big Butch. Tall, strong, and powerful. Look at those long strides of his as he sweeps around that bank track. These boys will hit up to 40 miles an hour on this track. Tremendous speed on the Masonite surface. Butch Nurn, the only jammer out so far, as the shorthanded Braves have not been able to get anybody out. Now, despite the fact that the Braves have only three men, on the track, should Nerr pass them all, he gets five points. If you pass everybody on the other team on the track, you get five. Now, here's a jammer getting out of there for the Braves. Finally, Ray Novak, number five, moves out. But he's got a long way to go to catch up to Big Butch Nerr. Nerr is moving up on the back, but there isn't much pack right now for him to catch. There are only uh, two members of the Braves remaining in that pack and three members of the Ravens now as there are jammers out for each team. Here comes Nur on the back of the pack, sweeping up on Gene Kuklovsky. He sweeps up on George Copeland. Copeland tries to block back on him. Just two Braves in there right now. Nur goes by for two points and cuts it off. Butch Nur got by Kuklovsky and Copeland that time for the two points for the Ravens, and then immediately cut it off to make sure that Novak the uh, jammer out there for the Braves was not able to uh, come along, catch up, and perhaps score on his blocker. That's where that cutoff comes in so handy. Sometimes you score a point, but it's expedient to cut it off rather than try for one more because of the position of your own blockers and the opposition jammers. 20 to 18 now. The Braves are leading the Ravens. Once again, we're set to go. Penalty time still running. A penalty at the end of a period carries over and the men are now serving the girls penalties here's Nur out jamming again out with him goes Dave Battersby and George Copeland is out on the jam the Braves have only one jammer in a jammer's helmet Copeland blocks back on Nur now goes after Dave Battersby number 54 Nur comes right back after Copeland Copeland number four in the dark uniform for the Braves if he can get that lead he might cut it off George, however, earlier tonight in the same situation, gambled and scored. Watch him now as he moves up on Battersby. Battersby, the lead jammer, watching back on Copeland. Copeland fakes, ducks by, and cut it off. Georgie Copeland, number four, took the lead just long enough to put the hands on the hips and cut it off, and that's exactly what he did. Number four, George Copeland. When he's not skating in the roller derby, is a psychology student at UCLA. 20 to 18 the score. The Braves lead the Ravens. We have nine minutes now remaining in the contest. A little less than nine minutes as that clock is running. One penalty for the Braves has expired, and the teams are now at equal strength. They have four skaters apiece. However, the... Uh, Braves are still skating with just one jammer in a striped helmet. As Mary Upel, who drew the five-minute penalty, was a jammer. And when a jammer is penalized, you skate one jammer short. Frank Macedo, number 56, leaps away to the lead for the Ravens now. Little fellow has been banged around hard by Red Smart earlier tonight. There goes Ray Novak after him, number five for the Braves. And the Ravens' Dave Battersby, number 54. They're out and racing now in this roller derby contest. Watch the tremendous action as Battersby tries to block out Novak and leave Macedo as the lone man on the jam. But Novak is coming up fast on Macedo. Little Frank turns to watch him, fakes a block, now gives him one. They both go off into the infield, and the jam is off. As the leading jammer, Macedo, went off into the infield along with Ray Novak. The lead jammer left the track. 
And so the jam is off with no points and still 20 to 18 in favor of the Braves over the Ravens. Number six, Bob Mayo coming in. There's Macedo, number 56, who was the lead jammer and skated off into the infield. Only the boys or girls who were jammers on the immediate preceding jam are allowed to rest while the pack is reforming. The others must keep going. And they do a lot of skating out there on that bank track every night at tremendous speeds. You can hardly believe the excitement and speed until you see the roller derby in person. Here's Macedo breaking out in front once again, a tireless little guy. Frank Macedo, number 56 of the Ravens. And the Ravens girls team, most of them are standing up in the infield, exhorting their teammates to greater efforts. Blocking back in the pack as so far the Braves have not been able to get a jammer out. Hal Janowitz blocking at the front of the pack right now and doing a fine job on Bob Mayo. Here's a whip that sends Mark Ladonio out and Janowitz goes out with him to try and hold him in check. Janowitz started the block, now throws it on Ladonio. Ladonio can't get by Janowitz and so far Macedo is away out in front and starting to close now in the back of the pack. Macedo moving up as Janowitz continues to block hard on Mark Ladonio. Julian Silva, number 53, watching Bob Mayo, also up there at the head of the pack. And Battersby blocking back in the pack, trying to hold up three skaters. As Macedo moves up on the pack now, rough, tough, red Smart is back there to wait for him. Number three of the Braves in the dark uniform. Watch Smart, one of the meanest blockers in roller derby. Look at that block by Red Smart, and down goes Macedo. The jam is off. Red Smart can block. And now we have a timeout called on the track with a score in this roller derby contest. The Braves 20 and the Ravens 18. Once again, the skaters on the track. We're in the final skating period with the Braves leading the Ravens 20 to 18. Five minutes, 45 seconds now remaining in the game. And out goes the jammer. It's number six, Bob Mayo. Hal Janowitz, number 51, a blocker, goes with him. We've got another jammer out there, Mark Ladonio, number seven. And now Macedo takes the uh, jam lead. Number 56, tireless little Frank Macedo is out in front. Macedo being chased on the play by number six, Bob Mayo. Mayo of the Braves, Macedo of the Ravens, and Macedo has the lead right now. And the blocking starts now back in the pack. Both teams at full strength here. As they circle the track with one jammer out for each team. Beg your pardon. The Ravens are still skating one man short. And it looks now like Don Rixman is just now stepping on the track. The penalty time is up and now both teams are at full strength as Rixman just now came back to the track. Oh, fine block by Macedo and down on the play that time went Bob Mayo. There's a point, he passed Red Smart before he went down, tangled up in the rail. It's a point for the Ravens as Frank Macedo got by Red Smart, number three, before he went off balance and fell. And now it's 20 to 19. The Braves lead the Ravens by one point. And, of course, the fans who like to see the little guy Macedo get by, a big fellow like Red Smart, gave him a tremendous round of applause when he went by. Now the skaters reforming the pack here so we can get the jam underway. Three minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the game. It's 20 for the Braves, 19 for the Ravens. They circle the track. Remember, they can interchange those helmets before the jam gets underway. But once a player is designated as a jammer, then he is a jammer. Out of the pack on the play now comes fast skating Julian Silva, number 53 of the Ravens. Coach Hal Janowitz, number 51, is also out as a jammer. George Copeland, number four, is out for the Braves. Three fast skaters on the jam now. Bob Mayo, the other designated jammer for the Braves has not been able to get out of the pack 
The girl skaters from both teams up standing in the infield now, hollering and yelling to their teammates. Copeland now takes the lead for the Braves. Here's Julian Silva trying to come up after him. George Copeland going to gamble. He's going to go for it. Copeland chased by Janowitz. Janowitz comes up on the inside. He bumps Copeland, goes by. He's got four, and then he fell and cut it off. Janowitz with a big play, a four-pointer for the Ravens, and the Ravens lead now 23 to 20. George Copeland also tried to slip through and score for the Braves, but the officials ruled that Janowitz was down before Copeland passed any members of the Ravens, and thereby the jam was off. So the Braves did not score. The Ravens got four big points. Now the Ravens lead 23 to 20. All set now as the jammers and the striped helmets drop to the back of the pack. Now the whistle sounds. We have two minutes left in the game. And the Braves need the big play now. The Ravens just came from behind with a four-pointer. Now let's see what the Braves can do. This could be the last scoring chance here. There isn't time for two full jams. Only a minute and 39 seconds remaining. Time working now for the Ravens. And Julian Silva tries to go out to the front. He's knocked down by Red Smart on a fine elbow block. Smart, of course, not a jammer. Here's a block on Battersby by Smart, and down goes Battersby. Georgie Copeland goes to the outside, and the jam is on. One minute, 20 seconds left in the game. The Ravens lead the Braves by three points, and now the Braves have two jammers out. George Copeland and Gene Kuklovsky are both out. And the Ravens have not yet been able to get a jammer out. Two men out and jamming now for the Braves. They could score the big one here. Conceivable they could score 10 points if both jammers could pass the entire Raven team. They need at least four. They're down 23 to 20. The Braves have the jammers, but the Ravens have the lead with 45 seconds left to go in the game. Kuklowski and Copeland closing on the pack. A great blocker, Hal Janowitz, the coach of the Ravens, back to block, number 51. Look at them talk over strategy now as they come up on Janowitz. Here they come, Copeland and Kuklovsky. Janowitz blocks on Copeland. He bluffs on Kuklovsky. Goes for Copeland again. They can't get by. Here's another block by Janowitz. Janowitz again blocking. Tremendous blocking by Coach Hal Janowitz. He blocks on Copeland, on Kuklovsky, on Copeland. Tremendous blocking by Janowitz. Just look at that boy block. Another block by Janowitz. Copeland tries to get by. Four seconds to go in the game. Two, one, the game is over. It's all over. And Coach Hal Janowitz, with a tremendous piece of individual blocking, Blocking one man on two, held for, I would say, almost 40 seconds. Two very fine roller derby skaters at bay, did not let them score, and preserved the lead of three points for the Ravens as they beat the Braves by a score of 23 to 20. Well, as Elmer has said, there's a lot of individual play as well as team effort in this game. And you are watching in those final few minutes of this contest some of the finest team play and certainly one of the greatest pieces of individual blocking effort ever by Coach Hal Janowitz of the Ravens as he held off. Both Gene Kuklowski and George Copeland at the rear of the pack did not let them score. Almost alone, he blocked for some 40 seconds on those two men and held them back and allowed his team, the Ravens, to win by a score of 23 to 20. Well, Elmer Anderson, you have seen a great match tonight. How would you sum it up? I'd sum it up as primarily one of the greatest offensive plays I've ever seen in games. Of course, roller derby is always great no matter where. You might be watching roller derby tonight. It's been a real pleasure working with Bob Robertson. I certainly hope I see you here at every roller derby game. Right you will, Elmer. We'll be back again, of course, and uh, back with more roller derby. For Elmer Anderson, this is Bob Robertson saying thanks for being with us, reminding you to always be a good sport. Be a good sport always. Good night. <laughs>